So my name is Thomas Orens. I'm responsible for virtual reality content in retail and uh, pilots out of this specific phase. So I have studied design. Um, I'm part of Audi AG since 2012 and uh, will tell you a bit more about taking virtual content to different new areas. So no talk about AR. And you? Yeah, um, as already mentioned, my name is Jan. Um, I'm coordinating all the funny stuff around AR and VR for the Center of Competence. Um, yeah, and I will present a little bit more about our activities uh, later after this talk. Okay, so I will take you into a small journey from an approach and a proposal up to a pilot, up to a product we're currently having. That means what you will see is taking VR content into a cloud application down to a customer. So completely far away from what you might have heard all the day yesterday and today. And I divide this up into trends, reinvent, challenge, and next. And uh, we'll also pick out some quality aspects, measurements. So I think, yeah, a very colorful presentation also with some videos. So lay back and, and enjoy. Trends. So what have been the trends uh, we have been looking for to say, okay, we have a retail application called Audi City. Um, what could be done next? Having big hardware out there, for sure there are trends. That means we know that dealerships go digital. Uh, we don't have th that much cars um, down at the dealer. There are so many we couldn't even display them. The journey, uh, also what you're doing, you're online uh, most of the time you will do your research not at the dealer. And uh, you as a customer expect more just because everything is getting more and more available and digital. So what does it mean? Uh, in former times, maybe you, maybe I, have visited the dealer by five times up to the point when you made up your mind, okay, I would like to buy a car. Today, having your devices, your access to different uh, information media, it takes about 1.6 visits of you in average, and then you know what you want like to buy. The second thing, in former times, of course, we also built Audi at, at Audi for sure, but there wasn't that much mass personalization. Right now, also in Germany, we are a high configuration market, and everyone likes to configure. So we have a lot of options, and every car, more or less, is individual. And for sure, finally, um, we have stores which are more located and getting centralized. So we don't have that much um, urban reselling uh, factories. We are just more, we're getting more centralized. So the people expect us to be in the cities. If they see something, it must be in the city somewhere. So what does it mean the journey is online? Just a few quotes. Um, normally it takes us, you and me, about 14 hours of research. We've been on 18 websites, and uh, for sure, three quarters of everything, of every information you are doing, is online. When we have a look around the world, uh, asking people, are you willing to buy online, taking account maybe Amazon, I think you know about this, or eBay, do this online, for sure, even for new products. China is willing to say, yes, 92% 90 of everyone out there might also buy a car online and uh, 75 potentially globally and we see a trend also at Audi AG that this will be proceeding so I don't want to say anything against retail but we need to face that the customers may change in the future okay um, getting back to Audi we know about websites uh, like shoe manufacturers which are doing a lot of 3d applications a lot of 3d interaction and uh, this is a given thing, so they see what they configure more or less in 3D. And uh, the customers like you and I experience, or they would like to have something to experience, not only to see some images. And if I see our web page, now it changed a bit, everything is there, you can configure, but it's very static. Static images which guide you through the process, but there's not much interaction. Okay, so we need to think about some kind of re-invitation. Um, we know we have on the web page, so I'm really talking about the website currently, 
static images, we have limited views because they are predefined, we have a single background, we have limit configurations, there has been no light, so some of our competitors have, we also have right now, how the, the car does behave, and you as a customer, you have no control. In VR or AR, if you interact with the model, you could have. In the website, you haven't. So what we did with this virtual content taken out of Audi City, pushed this on the website, you can animate the car. You have the freedom of use because you steer your model. You can choose multiple backgrounds from virtual reality. You have uh, all cars and all options online. Everything which is buildable can be displayed in 3D. You can turn the light on in the virtual streamed application on the website and you drive the application. So again, what does it mean? Um, down on the left, I'm talking about that kind of application. We have around 500 uh, systems out there which are named, meant to be like a sitting or walking VR. This is a pure on-site retail system with massive hardware. What we did then, or I had the pleasure to do it, was to set up a prototype called AVE2Web, Audi Visualization Engine, is used in retail, to web for sure it means into the web, and pushed an A4 live in 2016, and also the Netherlands was so convinced that they pushed it also live on their own costs, and measured it. Does it do something to the customer and also for us? So a little impression about what we have done. this short film what the AV2 web is in the website it means it's fully responsive you can have it on every device why is that so because it's uh, plug-in free it's just an image stream um, some measurements normally I wouldn't be oh my goodness all the iPhones are rising um, I wouldn't be allowed to talk about this but for sure if you see that we measured it so we did this for 100 days and measured the success of 2d and 3d codes and just to give you a, s a short example, you see that 3D codes, which have been generated using the AVE2 web, hit the dealer by more than 9%. And using the technology in the web, gain an upsell for the A4 family of 1,200 euros in Germany. Now, if you know about how many cars we are selling, you can make up your mind what this may mean. So it's not only a fancy system, it does help us as a brand. Okay, next slide. Um, we also measured uh, the idea, the perception, the interaction of everyone who's using the system. The white column is 2D, the red column is 3D, so you see uh, this kind of application does do something with the customer. It helps. Right now we are having the rollout, so we try to plan having 25 markets until the end of the year being live with the AV2 web. Six are rolled out right now, six are coming next, so we, we are in a hurry. The challenge, in the, f uh, the challenge for this specific system has been, we have a real test system, which has a hardware, we would like to multiply those users, so we need to push this to somewhere, into the cloud system. And if you have it in the cloud, but you would like to have this running on a web page, you need to have a low latency because if you move your mouse and it takes too long, you would say, well, oh, that's boring. Something isn't really working. My connection isn't good enough, whatever. 
It's plugin free. Within five seconds or less, if you go onto the web page RDDE, UK, Italy, Spain, for instance, it takes five seconds or less, and then you have a stream. If the bandwidth is sufficient. If the bandwidth isn't sufficient for show, then you won't get a 3D stream because you don't. We, would we want not you to be dis disappointed. Um, we don't touch the car, so I'm responsible for content. That means the real-time content with five to eight minute polygons is untouched. We use the same car in retail as we use it for the cloud. So don't touch my content. Everything stays the same. No, no retouch. It is workable or uh, uh, loadable on all devices, so you can use your iPhone, Android, whatever. It's just a web page, it's an image stream, everyone can have it. All bandwidth, for sure, and if there's different codecs, it will, be it will be supported. So what is next, just from our, from my marketing perspective, you will then guide into a broader perspective, if I could make a wish, for sure. A more sleek and uh, interesting UI, so make the car bigger. At the moment I get a lot of feedback to say, okay, I don't find your AV2 web, where is it? I would love to have it big. So the mo ma main attention for you guys maybe to enter a web page is to go figure a car, mostly. Yes, it is. Statistic-wise, it is. So it needs to be on top. And maybe also an easy interaction to open up or open up a door or a trunk, for sure. The next one is personalization. Yes. If we do it at Amazon, we could do it also at Audi. Welcome you back if you get back to on the web page. For sure, there's DSGVO. <laughs> a little hard to track it, but uh, also to recommend you, you have something chosen, maybe choose it for the next time. Nice ribbons or nice equipment. For sure, I think it's the very next step, home VR. So um, as a play out, it's very easy to have a 360 on a cardboard. That's not fancy, but possible. But I will have to have the whole configuration system we have on the website at home and dive into some kind of movie if possible and then get back. So there's a lot of ongoing stuff. Maybe also simulate the car. And emotional driving, yes, a nice topic, but a hard one. So we do this in Audi City, but uh, well, it's more an approximation. These are just images taken out of the content without post. This is just game engine in retail taken into the cloud. So just a few images from 2016. And now the exterior, so without touch. This has been more or less competition. Maybe some of you ha know, the know the picture. It is a, it is a press picture, but uh, the company who has done this was forced to redo the same visual uh, um, fidelity that the picture has. For those which are more or less likely to know what to pick out, that this is VR stuff, Reflection not correct, and you see the polygons. But this is a 90 frames per second VR scene. Another one, another one. Exterior 2017, also press picture and comparison to VR. So this is the really VR scene. You could enter this with your HTC Vive or whatever. And some wrap up, what we are talking about. <laughs> So this was use case specific, and now we are getting back to the global perspective. Yeah, uh, thank you, Thomas. Um, I think very impressive, but um, I do not want to let you out without uh, answering the question: What would Marcus say about that? Uh, for sure, nice technique, nice content. Uh, let's push the head. I'm quite sure that we that he also will confirm that. Um, yeah, then uh, let's 
go one step back um, and start from the beginning of our products. I think everything showed here by now will be public and is done for you. Um, but before we can produce some nice images, some nice content, we have to develop it, the product. And we have a long-term history in AR and VR in certain regions um, of the product development. Um, with a nowadays uh, possibility, um, the technology is available. The power of the today's calculation machines is also high enough. Every area starts to investigate in these technologies. And at the end, we have a lot of different requirements from the different departments, but everybody has to work together to create a premium product. And um, how we deal with that situation? We established the center of competence um, at Audi to be a, s a central point where all our departments, hello, uh, may ask for help or get support. We enable access to new technologies. We uh, do consultancy mainly and our yeah, I think main impact is to act as a kind of network hub internally and also externally. So we connect our technology providers, solution providers, new technology, new solutions with our internal departments and bring things together to move on in this area. Um, what we are not doing, we are not developing use case specific solutions or solutions for our department. Um, we take care about the new future trends and technology trends, have a closer look and what's supporting our purposes of the future or our requirements of the future. I call it the basic technology bricks and um, I just want to give you a um, short insight what um, these basic technology bricks are for us. So uh, one um, slide showing the title linked data. It's all about information handling, how we deal with information, how we deal with uh, data, and how we prepare our processes for the future, how we deal with information in the future. So by now it's nothing, that's nothing to do with AR and VR, but what is AR and VR? AR and VR is supporting us in dealing with information. And if you do not have access to information, it's not really um, uh, invention or uh, not really an uh, uh, innovation using AR and VR. I also want to stress this uh, word platform. I heard it a lot of times during the last two days. Um, nearly everybody is developing a platform or a solution based on a platform. Um, platform for me fulfills the requirement to store and link data, to deliver and connect information and in a different meaning also we are offering a platform to collaborate and exchange for our internal customers and clients and departments. So what's the, the main thing behind the platform? They have to talk to each other. So there is not only one platform or not only one platform solution. For me, <coughs> especially uh, one point um, I want to highlight is interaction. We are living in a 3D space if we are not able to interact with our virtual counterparts, we just consume 3D data. And a basic technology for interaction is tracking. You need tracking to localize yourself if you are in the room and you also um, have the position of your virtual objects in relation to you. One output, um, for example, we own an uh, AR accessory configurator. You will never see that in that, uh, that way. Because it's just an evaluation project for us uh, to evaluate different tracking technologies on the market and give a feedback to our clients internally which technology for which use case is best. Go one step further, that enhances this kind of tracking with uh, the meaning behind. So it's called about context awareness. So you know what in the scene and in which context the things are moving there. And Putting all these pieces together, we're developing new methods and uh, new processes and for sure we do some proof of concepts to go from the theory behind to the 
practical uh, realization. And also we are always looking for some partnerships. Uh, we were lucky uh, that we were invited this year to the first mixed reality accelerator. And um, one of these outcomes will be presented by our project partner. Hi, I'm Aslan, a mentor from the world's first mixed reality accelerator. And I'd like to introduce to you this proof of concept a team of students put together over the event's nine weeks for Audi. Combining machine learning, our in-house Vertex platform, and the Microsoft HoloLens, the students created a seamless mixed reality experience which allows for the real-time assistance in the repair or construction of an Audi engine, reducing human error while increasing productivity. The tech allows for quick locating of parts in a workbench and a procedural animation guiding the engineers step by step, each task verified and recorded in real time until the work is complete. For new engineers, it means training on real equipment, giving them real tactile feedback while being guided by Microsoft HoloLens, reduce training time, but train more effectively. So, um, it was really a great experience working together with these passionate people. Um, just nine weeks to realize um, that proof of concept. And we learned a lot um, uh, during these nine weeks and uh, of the outcome of this project. Um, we can count endless our activities and showing nice images of our cars for sure. Um, but the main thing behind what, what is our purpose, uh, what do we do um, at Audi, um, and what do we drive at Audi? First of all, every activity should lead to an uh, enterprise solution. So we have to take care to make it scalable. And I'm totally on the same page. Um, Jürgen Lumera marked out yesterday, if you not have the whole chain in mind, every proof of concept is a waste of time and money. And to reach that scalable solution, we need standards, such as the OpenXR, a lot of activities around. And <coughs> I'm quite proud yesterday there was the, the great panel about the Open AR, uh, the, the Open AR Cloud, which serves as a future platform and also open up the gateways and APIs for our solutions. So that's the base, the technology behind, but um, a core is transformation is part of our future. So it will always be a kind of transformation. And what we are doing is supporting our departments, moving from the today's challenges into the future of the digital world of tomorrow. And um, we need, therefore, open minds. All of these is not could not be reached without people with passion. And if the people with passion are well distributed in every area, you cannot drive only a company such as Audi can also move things for the better. And um, I invited a colleague of mine a few weeks ago for an internal startup event, giving a keynote, and he also inspired me to change my thinking. Um, it's not about a network, it's not about doing technology stuff. If you want to be successful in transformation, you have to act like a virus. Be immersive dive deep in, influence, or act as a docking station for influence. And at the end, everything emerged stronger than before. And that's my, <coughs> my message um, to you here. There are a lot of people with a lot of power, and you can move things on. So please act as a virus and help us to do the transformation more effective. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Very impressive. Thank you to give us the insights. Any questions from the audience? We have time for one, two questions. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, when you said you had the increased customer um, involvement, 66%, I think it was, and then the upsell, um, 
how much higher was that than what you initially or what Audi predicted it would be? I mean, did they predict maybe we would get 500 euros of upsell and now we got 1,200 or is it lower? Or so I, I just just kind of make I a guess curious. because it's uh, this is uh, part of Thomas' uh, area. Okay. Um, but I guess they expected lower um, between 500 and 1,000 um, and so it was quite more than expected, yeah. Any other question? I saw. So you mentioned on the car configurator, you want better visualization, better, bigger pictures. So are you going to do like AR visualization? There's in the field of many devices now so they can put the car in their driveway. And if so, would that be connected to the web experience? So if I change something on the web or if I change something in my driveway, it would be part of my same user journey that I could then go back to the web or to the dealer. Um, yes, and they're working very hard on a seamless user journey um, and did I get you right uh, the first part of the question was about AR awesome yeah, the reason why I am pushing uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of AR um, and I'm always uh, have this discussion with Thomas about the quality the quality is not high now if we if we are able to move the image and the, dis the display the quality to this higher level I think the way for AR is open that's the reason why we do all the, the technology stuff and, and scouting in the background um, to be prepared for that point. Excuse me, do you keep partner service center with augment reality device uh, with a database service operations? Sorry, could you repeat please? Um, it's Shall I read it? Okay. okay. Um, do you equip partner service center with augmented reality devices with a database uh. of service operations? Okay, yeah. Um, I already started an initiative uh, three and a half year, or three years ago, um, where we brought together all our uh, partners, even our uh, colleagues from the other brand. Um, and I know that uh, in certain countries, they now roll out um, all these uh, solutions already. We are still in a pilot phase internally. Um, Porsche of North America uh, partnered with Adhere. Um, we have some other uh, projects running, um, but this is the plan to uh, establish direct uh, the connection to our service uh, database. <laughs>